Hi mates and welcome back to my World of Tanks channel. I'm Antonov to as usual and today we'll be doing another World of Tanks tutorial. After having talked about view range and hiding in brushes and those kind of mechanics in our last tutorial, today we'll be kind of discussing the same theme when we talk about scouting. So first of all we will try to find out what makes a good scout, what kind of traits does a tank have to have so that you can scout with it efficiently. Then we will take a look at all the theory behind scouting, what you have to do in a game to contribute to your team actually winning. Because what I see lots of scouts doing is just basically drive their tank right into the enemy spawn at the beginning of the battle and then spot the entire enemy team, they'll get some experience for it, but their allies were not even close to a position in which they could have supported them with fire, so basically they were completely useless, just wasted a tank that could have potentially won them the game, just because they didn't really know how to scout. So hopefully I will be able to explain that to you in this video, and then right at the end I will be showing you two replays that will hopefully demonstrate the two different main styles of scouting that there are, and the pros and cons, and how to perform them efficiently. So. Let's start out with what kind of stats should stand out on a scouting tank. So most scouts are light tanks, but not all light tanks are scouts. A good example for a light tank that doesn't really function very well as a scout is the Crusader. It's a tier 5 British light tank, and it doesn't really have very many stats, but... Uh, would make it perform well in the scouting role. So what kind of stats are these? What kind of stats do you need? Well, first of all, obviously you will need good view range because if your view range is bad, then you won't be able to scout enemies at very long ranges, which is obviously what you want to do. So that's the primary thing you should look for. Then next you need good top speed and power to weight ratio. This will allow you to get into positions from where you can spot enemies very quickly and also when you get spotted yourself you can relocate to a new position and start scouting again so good mo mobility that means mainly good speed and power to weight ratio but also good traverse speed is very very important and lastly you will need good signal range a scout without good signal range is not very useful because you need the signal range to transmit the location of the enemies you've spotted to, for example, your allied artillery or tank destroyers. Without good signal range, you will spot the enemies, but your allies won't be able to shoot them. So those are the three things you have to look out for. View range, mobility, and signal range. And that means that although most scouts are light tanks, not all scouts have to be light tanks. And at a certain point in the game almost any vehicle might have to perform the role of a scout even if that might not be what it actually is designed for. A good example would be if it comes to the later stages of a game and for example uh, the situation turns out to be a two on two so there are two vehicles left on each team and on your team there is you in a tank destroyer and also an allied artillery piece. Chances are you will have to scout for the artillery piece that makes you a scout, although you are driving a tank destroyer. So do not just fix your mind on scouts always being light tanks. And also do not think that all light tanks are scouts, as we showcased on the Crusader. Because the Crusader, let's have a look at the Crusader stats. It gets a top speed of 44 kilometers an hour. That is really bad for a light tank and doesn't really allow you to relocate very easily so you cannot get into forward scouting positions your view range is 340 meters that is below average at tier 5 and yeah your signal range is I guess all right at tier 5 I'm not quite sure I don't really know about tier 5 radios but anyway the Crusader is not a very good scout good scouts however are for example the Chinese WZ 132 or the um, French AMX 3090. Let's have a look at the AMX 3090 stats. It gets a top speed of 64 kilometers an hour, which is absolutely great. Its power to weight ratio is 23.19 horsepower per ton. That is really off the charts. Its view range is 400 base, and I pimped it up to 449 with equipment and crew skills. 
and its signal range is an amazing 750 bass and the way I, I tuned it up it's almost 800 so this tank is almost an ideal scout which doesn't mean that you always have to play it as a scout you could also play it as a damage dealer an assassin or just a kind of a yeah, roaming vehicle that tries to clean up low-life enemies the important thing is that you have to analyze your team and find out before the battle starts who on your team is going to have to perform the scouting role because almost always there will have to be at least one or two scouts on your team to get vision and if there aren't any other tanks that are going to do it then you will have to perform that role in the AMX 1390 because having no vision will very very often be a reason why you lose a game. So all that being said now how do you scout efficiently and as I already pointed out a commonly made mistake is that as long as you get vision of enemies no matter how you do it you've performed your role to a decent degree as a scout but that is not always the case for example if you just run into the enemy spawn point and get obliterated straight away fair enough you might have spotted 15 enemy vehicles but no damage will have been dealt from your allies to those vehicles because they were nowhere near in firing range at those enemies and you will end up with a quite poor experience score although you spotted lots of enemy vehicles and basically it will be a 14 versus 15 for the rest of the game so please do not be that guy and now I will explain to you how to scout properly now there are two main approaches to scouting there is active scouting and passive scouting so we'll begin with active scouting because well that is probably what you should start out doing when you are not a very experienced player and although in my opinion active scouting is a lot more difficult to pull off than passive scouting to be an effective passive scout you have to have a lot of game knowledge and experience so really there's no point in trying to passive scout before you haven't had i'd say 5k games and know all the maps really well passive scouting is not very efficient so you should try to active scout so what do you do when you active scout well the basic idea is that you use your speed and active scouts have to be really really fast and for active scouts a lot more than for passive scouts having a good traverse speed and acceleration are absolutely key so what you do as an active scout is you run around the battlefield and you try to light up your enemies for your allies to shoot at and you use your speed maneuverability to juke shots and avoid getting hit so you might ask well what's the difference between just rushing at the enemy base and roaming around the battlefield and trying not to get shot at well my main uh, distinction between those two approaches would be that what i would try to do usually is i would just sit around in the base or try to stay back for let's say the first two minutes of a game if i was active scouting try to play kind of passively at the beginning and do not extend beyond your front line of heavy tanks at the beginning of a battle and just wait till you see that your entire team or let's say the majority of your team is in a position from where they will be able to engage enemies that you spot and then once you see that they are in their position mostly this concerns tank destroyers and artillery then you should try to drive forwards and try to spot enemies the thing is though that you should not really just rush at the enemy spawn or just straight out drive at places where you know that lots of enemies will be clustered but you should try to kind of drive around and drive kind of circles and loops and just try to perform as many evasive maneuvers as possible and still although you do not drive directly at the enemy base this style is very very risky and it can happen and will happen quite often that you just get shot to bits but chances are that once you wait two or even three minutes before beginning a scouting roam enemies will already be engaged in firefights with your allies so they will be distracted and as long as you do not open fire at enemy vehicles that you cannot damage anyway because quite often scout guns will be quite inferior to the guns of equal tier tanks that do not perform the scouting role chances are you won't damage them anyway so why even shoot at them and get their attention you just try to rush past them and get vision of and maybe even you could try to later on 
uh, go for enemy artillery or tank destroyers and flank them. So that is active scouting and if this all sounds a bit confusing now, just hang on and I'll have some gameplay coming right up that will showcase this, uh, this playstyle. So what was the other playstyle again? It was passive scouting and actually passive scouting is a lot easier but as I already said it requires a lot of game knowledge, map knowledge and uh, that's why it is not really anything that you can do before you are kind of quite experienced in World of Tanks. Now what passive scouting involves is that you look for a position on the map where you can be unseen so this is usually behind a bush or a tree and from where you can oversee a position or a part of a map where lots of enemies like to go and you will position in this bush you just basically camp there you will get out your stove and your tent and maybe have a barbecue or something you'll just literally camp there until your allies have shot the enemies you are spotting in this part of the map that you can uh, overlook from your scouting position two bits and after that you can change position and uh, go forwards a bit and passive scout again. The most important thing when passive scouting is not to fire your gun. Do not ever fire your gun when you're passive scouting because that will let your camo values plummet and you will get spotted and completely dumped on by enemy tank destroyers and medium tanks. So do not fire your gun, stay stealthy but the thing is you really need to have good map knowledge because you have to know these positions these bushes behind which you can camp to get good vision on your enemies and that is something that you will only be able to know once you've had a good amount of games in world of tanks so i'm sorry that this was a lot of theory crafting at once and i guess some of you will be kind of quite confused now actually i kind of confused myself a bit while I was babbling on here. So I do not want to hang around much longer in the garage. Now we're gonna head out to the battlefield and I'll show you two games, one for each uh, different scouting playstyle and hopefully after that things will become a lot clearer. So first game is in the WZ-132 tier eight uh, Chinese light tank and this will be showcasing the roaming playstyle. So as you can see, I am actually being quite aggressive here. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of driving forwards a bit so my plan is to get to these bushes this bush line here just where the, the forest ends and maybe spot some enemies here while they progress towards the forest and sure enough I do spot an AMX 1390 and he gets shot at straight away now I realize that he's seen me anyway so that's why I fire my gun there if he had seen me I probably wouldn't have used my gun but uh, that's the bonus of uh, choosing the roaming playstyle is that you can also put out some damage next to spotting enemies. Well, when you're passive scouting, you only spot and you will usually not be putting up that much damage. And now what I'm doing here actually is more of a passive scout, but um, I still classify this replay as roaming because later on I roam a bit more and then also I kind of, if I was actually passive scouting, I usually would not if I had come into this game with a mindset that I wanted to passive scout, I probably would not have located here. Although by chance this actually turns out to be quite a good passive scouting location. And as you can see, thanks to me spotting these enemies, uh, this T-59 and the Yak Tiger are taking massive hits. Actually the Yak Tiger didn't take a big hit yet. But the T-59 is getting shot to bits right now. And always remember that when you are spotting the enemy that is taking damage, you get 50% off the experience uh, for the damage that's being dealt. So actually, you can get a lot of experience and credits from just spotting enemies if you do it right. And now I have been spotted. That's why it's essential to have sixth sense. And... Thankfully, I get really, really lucky and bounce the shot. The IS-8 misses, and now I start firing my gun again because I'm spotted anyway. So I realize now that passive, passive scouting won't be an option here anymore because the enemy knows exactly where I am, and I'm kind of a bit of a sticky situation here. So I'm just really hoping that my allies will move up now because, as you can see, there are lots of enemy heavies camping back here, and obviously they've been supporting with lots of fire and that's the only reason why I'm alive here because if enemies would rush me over this hilltop they would just die instantly to the heavy tank fire from the rear. 
And this IS-8 is gonna try it now. I fire my gun, I miss. And he doesn't even fire yet. Now he spotted me, though actually that wasn't very clever to fire my gun there because I wasn't spotted, so he didn't know where I was. However, the IS-8 does get killed by our artillery. Two artillery hits coming in there and he does get completely wrecked. Actually three, but the last one came a bit too late. And now the enemy RT is firing at me, so I have to keep on the move. A Rhymata Borsik fires at me, however we spot him in turn and he takes a big hit from a heavy. And oh, this Tiger P is just going absolutely ham. Can we finish off a Rhymental? Yes, we can. Okay, great. So, um, again here, you, see, you always have to be flexible. You d should never panic. Even very, like, I was, I, I kind of got afraid that I might die now. But I just kept calm and uh, realized that this Tiger P was just going completely ham. So I was able to pick up the kill there. And um, nothing too bad came of it. And now there's only, I think there's only a Yak Tiger and a Comet here. Yeah. So we've got the ass of this Yak Tiger. I get shot and now I have to retreat instantly because he's turning around, but he doesn't have a gun depression to hit me. And again, he takes a big, big hit, two big hits, and he's down. And this is another important element of the active scouting play still is if the enemies are not distracted when you get to them, then you can actually distract them. For example, this Yak Tiger turned around to fire at me. And that exposed his sides and rear to those two tier 9 vehicles there that were able to output a lot more damage than I would have ever been able to. And thus the Yak Tiger was taken down really, really quickly. So I decided not to go for that Comet as he was dead anyway. And I now make the decision to try to light up the enemy artillery. Or maybe even get them. We'll see. And now I spot a Louvre up there. And that is a really dangerous tank to engage at long ranges because he, uh, yeah, he has a very, very accurate gun. So I get spotted there, that's why I fire my gun. If your sixth sense doesn't go off, and usually you do not want to fire it because in a one on one against a Louvre, I mean, probably not going to come out on top. Now, what I'm doing here actually is not very intelligent because, and I die for it, and that was not good what I did there so I'm just going to quickly highlight my mistake I was stationary and I tried to hide behind this rock but it was way too small and I just got sniped by that Louvre if I had moved and tried to juke his shots probably I would have died too but I would have had a lot higher chance to survive because uh, and chances are the players you're going to be matched up against are not going to be like amazing so usually the aim will be quite a bit off and uh, you'll be able to dodge like 30 to 40 percent of the shots most of the time so it would have given me an a lot higher chance of surviving and maybe I could have even still spotted the artillery for before I would have died so that would have been a way better decision and maybe this game didn't look like a lot to you and unfortunately I do not have the post game stats of this for this game but I can assure you that this was actually an ace tanker in the WZ132 and the thing is that Although I actually didn't do that much damage and I only got one kill in this game, the amount of assistance I pulled off for my team was huge and actually allowed my team to completely steamroll the eastern flank of this map. So although sometimes as a scout you do not actually get acknowledged for all that you did for your team, we kind of really, really contributed to us winning this game and probably we would have even lost if... Uh, we hadn't played the role that we did in this game. So there you can see that active scouting can be efficient, but I'm now going to show you how you can be even more efficient, in my opinion, with passive scouting. So now we're on Malinovka, and this is actually the, probably the best map in the entire game for passive scouting. I'm in my AMX 12T, and I'm going to show you the basically best position in the game in my opinion for passive scouting and this will not work all the time but lots of the time and you can actually do it from the other side too so straight away without waiting for anybody to get to position I drive along this kind of bit of lower land here so that I cannot get spotted by my enemies and once I reach the um, level of progression that I want I head up again and I'm going to locate behind this bush and it's a bit of a shame that this 
type 58 still is a bit of a glory and he's actually playing the role of a scout although he's in the medium tank so there you go however he's doing it quite wrong because uh yeah he's just kind of suiciding right there however we are doing it right because we're in the probably best position you can be in as a passive scout and actually all these enemies here they're not being lit up by the teeth type 58 they're being lit up by us and you can see how our allies on uh, at our spawn behind us here are absolutely wrecking the enemies here with long range fire and as you can see i do not fire my gun once and right here you can see the enemy m41 saying that the game's basically lost after half a minute and that is true or oh, after one minute actually you can see how many enemies are down and basically we just won this game for our team within the first minute of the game that is how powerful scouting can be so there's the last black prince left and right now you can see i decided to fire my gun there because on the one hand i'm kind of greedy for the kill and also there aren't very many enemies left there anyway so we can just move in and clean up now basically the most important thing is that even when you start firing do never stop moving in your light tanks because the risk of getting uh, shot at is just too high and you really cannot take any punishment in these vehicles and there you go after two minutes two minutes into the game we are in the enemy spawn and now we're spotting this amx 12t just waiting for a clip to come back and put a shot into him before he gets taken down. So now it's just a question of cleaning up the artillery. And uh, <laughs> yeah, the score is 12 to 2, so that's a very one-sided victory. I mean, okay, it's not one yet. They could still come back. Just have to try hard enough. And still, although my team has got such a high numerical advantage, I am still playing safe. I'm coming round the bat through this little dip in the land here because I'm still kind of somewhat alone my allies are not there yet and I could still die really easily so you can see me still playing very safe here but when I see this panther getting low I do not want to play safe anymore I really want to get this panther oh no come on tiger one got it okay but we get to hit in the m41 and this Panzer IV is going to go down too. So, yeah, that's basically the game. And I just really hope this could showcase to you guys how great a scout's impact on the game can actually be. And I myself, I do not really usually enjoy playing scouts. I'm not much of a light tank player. But I do feel like I kind of understand how, it sh how you should play the role. I just kind of, I just don't really enjoy it that much. And actually, in my opinion... Playing, being a really, really good scout, like actually really carrying your team as a scout is probably one of the most challenging things to accomplish in World of Tanks. In my opinion, this, the role of a scout is actually the most difficult and complex role in the entire game. But mastering it to a degree where in every game you get results like this is just so, so satisfying. Unfortunately, I'm just not prepared to put in all the effort and uh, play through all these light tanks to get this good. But, you know, uh, it is, it can, it can actually, can really have a massive impact on the game. If you just follow the guidelines that I gave in this video. I really hope this video was helpful for you guys. I know it was kind of quite complex and long. So if you have any questions or are not sure about it, something I said, then please make sure to ask me in the comments. I'll be happy to answer and explain it a bit more if something is not completely clear yet. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed and learned something in this video. Thanks for watching as usual, and I hope I see you in my next vid or maybe even for Battlefield. Bye-bye.